Hello, I'm chess expert Gil Luna. This lesson is on the opera game. This was played by Paul Morphy versus the Duke of Brunswick in Kainosart in 1858 in an opera house. This is a very instructful game that will teach you first that development is very important and second material isn't everything. Okay, so Morphy starts off with e4 and e5 is played, knight f3 and knight and d6. Now, d6 is meant to protect the e pawn. It's another defense against knight f3 attacking you. The most common move is knight c6. The Petrov is played sometimes as well, but d6 can be played. It is called the Philidor's defense. All right, so the best way to handle this position as white is to simply play d4. Okay, so what you're doing with d4 is you're taking control of the center. You're putting direct pressure on the e pawn. You're attacking it twice. Okay, it's only being defended once. All right, your bishops are free. And it's a very good position for white. So here black counters with bishop to g4. Now, what this is doing is putting direct pressure on the knight. Okay, the knight is now pinned, which is indirectly protecting this pawn. See, if this pawn's being attacked by this knight, but this knight can't move, this bishop is indirectly protecting this pawn. So here, Morphy decides to play pawn takes pawn. Now here, black plays bishop takes knight. Now this is an intermezzo or an intermediate move. I'm gonna to explain to you now what that means. If the Duke and the Count were to play pawn takes pawn immediately after this first capture, okay, let's look at that again. White plays pawn takes pawn. If they would have played pawn takes pawn back, what happens is white has a very strong combination here. Start off with queen takes queen followed by king takes queen, which is forced, and then white can play knight takes e5. Okay, so let's look at this. White has first gained a pawn. Black cannot castle anymore. The king has moved. And white is also attacking the bishop and threatening to take the f7 pawn, which is a fork between the queen, the rook, and the king. So all this happened with that one move. Okay, if they would have played pawn takes pawn. So they saw this and played bishop takes knight. This is called an intermezzo or in-between move. Instead of capturing back directly, you do an in-between move first. You capture here first. All right, now here Morphy plays queen takes bishop and pawn takes pawn is played. Now look at the difference. When you throw in that bishop takes knight, Black's position is fine. If black would have played pawn takes pawn first, then that combination would have happened and black would have been in big trouble. Okay, so in this position, what is the fastest way for white to develop and put immediately pressure, immediate pressure on black? The move is bishop to c4. Okay, not only did you develop the bishop, you're getting ready to castle on one move, but you're threatening an immediate checkmate on f7. So here, black decides to protect the checkmate by playing knight f6. Okay, this is a pretty natural move. All right, you're killing the connection between the queen and the pawn. This knight is obstructing the connection between the queen and the pawn. Here, Morphy plays a very strong move. This is a double attack. Try to see if you can see it. Basically, Morphe is going to make one move and attack two points at the same time. Now, there are two weak squares on this board right now. All right, let's see if you can figure it out. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. If you're trying to figure out sometimes what squares are weak in your opponent's position, look at what's missing from their position. Black's white square bishop is gone. Okay, black's white square bishop is gone. 
Therefore, in this position, white still has his white square bishop, and the white squares are weak. So the two points that are weak in black's position are going to be b7 and f7. So here, Morphy plays the very strong move of queen to b3. So what this does is it's directly attacking b7 and indirectly f7. So now we have a double attack on f7 and we're attacking b7. Now, which one is more important to protect? Well, f7 is more important. Let's say you decided to play something like b6, then after bishop takes pawn, king d7, checkmate. All right. So f7 is more important to protect. So the duke plays queen e7. Okay, so this is logical. We are defending f7, even though b7 is lost. But here Morphy plays a very makes a very interesting choice. Morphy decides not to take the free pawn. Now, the reason Morphy decides not to take the free pawn is because Morphy didn't want to trade queens in this position. Yes, he would have been up a pawn, but it would have took a lot of work to still try to win this game, even though he was up a pawn. So uh, ask yourself this. How can black force a trade of queens if white plays queen takes b7? So if you want to pause the video and try to figure out, go ahead. Okay, so if queen takes b7, black can play queen b4 check. All right, so now we are checking this king and we are attacking this queen. This forces white to play queen takes queen and black can play bishop takes queen check. And after c3 and the bishop moving, yes, white is up a pawn, but now white has to spend the tempo to defend this pawn. And yeah, he's winning, but you know, anything can happen still. So Morphy didn't want this. Morphy decided that he was ahead in development and he had a lot of pressure on the position already, all right, with F7 and B7. So Morphy says, okay, I'm going to get rid of this check. And at the same time, I'm gonna develop a piece. So he plays knight to C3, all right? So what knight to C3 does, A, it develops the knight, B, it's putting pressure on these squares. And C, the most important thing right now, is it blocks this check. So now, if the Duke and the Count allowed queen takes b7, this queen b4 move does not work because the queen would just take the rook. All right, so this pawn must be defended now. So here, black plays c6. Now, c6 does multiple things. First, it directly protects this pawn, all right? This queen is now protecting this pawn, so Morphy cannot take it. Another thing c6 does is controls these two squares. Now, these two squares are very important for white because white can put the queen here, the bishop here, the knight here, same thing here. So this is a very powerful move. Not only that, but it creates what's called a lever. Okay, this C pawn can help spring this B pawn forward. All right, and we're gonna see that right now. Okay, so after C6, Morphy decides once again to develop a piece and put pressure. This is what you wanna do in the opening. You wanna develop pieces and you wanna put pressure. So Morphy plays bishop to G5. So let's look at this. We have pressure on F7, the knight is now pinned. So we have pressure on f6, and we still have pressure on b7. Not only that, but white can castle kingside or queenside in this position, and black's pieces are still stuck. So here, black is tired of being under pressure and decides that now it's time to fight back. Now it's time to try to push Morphe back. So black plays b5. Okay, that's the lever that I was telling you about. Okay, this C pawn springs the B pawn forward. So what they're thinking is, okay, after the bishop moves, 
All right, after the bishop moves, I can play b4, and now the knight has to move, and now we can find our way to get ourselves back into the game. So Morphy looks at this position objectively and says, wait a minute, I have, I have all my pieces out. I can castle either way in one move, and black still cannot castle and has both minor pieces still in. So now is a good time for a sacrifice. So here Morphe plays knight takes b5. All right, after pawn takes b5, Morphe plays bishop takes b5. All right, so here we have a check to the king. So now black plays knight to d7. Okay, so we have a pin knight here and we have a pin knight here. So two knights that can't move and the king is still stuck in the middle of the board. Now, Morphe decides that he needs to get his rook into the game. When you have this amount of pressure, what you need to do is you need to look at what's not doing anything. So we have these two rooks right here that are not doing anything. So Morphe decides to activate the rook and bring his king to safety. So this is a perfect position for queenside castle. Okay, so now, not only did Morphe get the king safe and connect these two rooks, to connected rooks are great, okay? But the king is safe as well. And we are now putting pressure on d7 again. So we have a castle queen side, we have our king safe, and we have direct pressure on d7. So the only way to protect this knight again is with rook d8. Now this knight is actually not protecting this knight because this knight cannot move because it's being pinned by the bishop. So now ask yourself this, what's the fastest way, the fastest way to get this rook into the game? All right, here Morphe plays rook takes d7. Okay, Morphe sacrifices the rook. Because what Morphe wants to do is get this rook into the game, right here, all right? So after rook takes rook, this is where you have to be patient. This is a mistake that beginners make all the time. Immediately, you probably want to take this rook. You sacrificed and you want to take the rook. But guess what? This is how you have, what you have to ask yourself. Can this rook move? Okay, can this rook move? No, the rook cannot move. Can this bishop be attacked to break this pin? No, the bishop cannot be attacked. So guess what? You get a free move in this position. You have time to bring this rook into the game. You do not need to capture back immediately. Now, here, once again, they're tired of all this pressure and decide that the only way to get back into this game is to trade queens. So here, black plays queen six. All right, black plays queen six, hoping that if Morphe plays queen takes queen, okay, pawn takes queen, and then after bishop takes knight, or bishop takes knight here first, and we take here, yes, white is still winning, but actually, this is definitely better, let's say, uh, if white is, still, white is still winning, but it will take a lot longer to win this game. So this is something that he's, he's hoping, to try to relieve the pressure. Remember, when you are attacking your opponent, you don't want to trade queens unless you have to. All right, when you have a, a, a what you don't want to do is take your foot off the gas and relieve the pressure when you're attacking your opponent. So here, Morphe finishes the game with a beautiful combination of checkmate in three. All right, if you'd like to pause the video and see if you can find it, go ahead. Okay, so the combination in this position is bishop takes rook. All right, so if queen takes bishop, then the rook can simply take the queen or actually queen, I think queen b8 here is better. All right, yes, queen b8 is better. And this is, you can take the queen on the next move. It's perfect for white. If you take with the king, you can't, right? Because you'll be in check. Okay, so here you pretty much have to take with the knight. All right, so after knight takes bishop, now we have a checkmate in two with the beautiful sacrifice. 
like to pause the video and see if you can find it, go ahead. Okay, Morphe played the beautiful queen b8. Now, a lot of times when I'm showing young players this position, and normally queen b8 is the first move that they see. Okay, they normally see queen b8, and then I say, oh, what happens when the knight takes you? And they go, oh, and they look for something else. Remember this valuable lesson. Never stop thinking after your opponent takes you. Okay, when you're analyzing something and you make a move and you get captured in your mind, don't stop thinking because a lot of time the winning move is on the next move or a couple moves later. Try to think through it first. And normally they start looking and looking and then they can't figure it out because they're automatically in their mind the knight is going to take the queen. But that's actually the correct move. Queen b8. In this position, knight takes queen is forced. The king cannot escape. Okay? The king cannot escape. Nothing can be blocked. So after knight takes b8, we have checkmate in one with rook d8. All right? So the king cannot take the rook because it's protected by the bishop. So imagine this. We have a bishop and a rook versus a queen, a rook, a bishop, and a knight. And Morphe wins. All right? Why? The king stayed in the center of the board. The knight and the bishop are still on their starting positions, even though this knight moved this back in the starting position, and so is the rook. So we have three pieces that never moved. Well, this one did, but it counts as it did in this position. Against a bishop and a rook. So absolutely beautiful game by Morphe. Let's go over the combination one more time. Bishop takes rook. Knight takes bishop. Queen sack. Knight takes queen. Checkmate. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed this video.